What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here. And today, I want to give my quick reactions to the Xbox Direct Showcase. Here we look at five different games, four of them coming from studios owned by Microsoft, to kind of give us a little bit of a insider's look at some of the different releases and info of future games dropping in 2024. Did it perform well? Were there games to be excited for? I give the good and the bad, as well as my final verdict. But before we jump in, if you like these reaction type of videos, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. So let's start off with the good. I overall thought that this was a pretty solid show. There were a total of five games that were showed off during the showcase that kind of gave us an insight that maybe only four and they gave us kind of a little sneak peek at a game from Square Enix. But of all the games that were kind of discussed or showed off, I feel like Indiana Jones was honestly the best looking. It kind of gave us a mixture of first and third person gameplay. A lot of different types of mechanics, whether it's going to be hand to hand combat, use of weaponry like guns, the whip, or even just stealth overall, gives you kind of a sense that it's kind of like a uncharted light type of game where you're going to get some kind of acrobatic things that will happen, but I don't think it's gonna be as smooth jumping and doing a bunch of different things like Uncharted was because that game made your boy Nathan Drake just leap from bounds to get anywhere. What I think is kind of the funniest thing though is that if you think about the fact that Uncharted, Trey Baker being such a kind of key character in that game is now going to be kind of the lead voice actor and body double of Indiana Jones in this game, which I thought was kind of hilarious. Because I thought to myself, is Harrison Ford doing the voice? But then I hear the kind of announcement that Troy Baker is going to be the one doing it. And I was like, that actually sounded pretty good for a guy that's not really Indiana Jones. Now, my hope is the story is better than some of the previous recent movies. I mean, there are some real dumpster fires. I'm still scarred by the Crystal Skull. But when they say that it's kind of taking place during the main storyline in between the Raiders of the Lost Ark and the last crusade so i feel like it's a it's a pretty solid spot to be in my whole expectation of this game is that it should be cinematic and i feel like that's what they did in this trailer they showed off kind of a cinematic trailer that is mirroring that feel to what we saw in the movies so i was all in for this indiana jones game i, I was very surprised that it actually looked as well as it did but it was definitely a good for me secondly senua saga hellblade 2 i was excited for this way before this trailer came out and the fact that it looks so damn good the visuals are amazing i feel like they did such a really good job with making this game look really good and i hear based on what the producers and the developers said the combat system got updated so i think that's great but my only downside of that is that i wish we saw more of it i wish we saw an entire like mission from this game I want to see the way in which the combat feels and looks and how do they make these adjustments? They just kind of said they made updates to the game. They didn't really tell us exactly which ways were different, but I was really excited to hear that this was going to be a May release, which I think gives us a, a game to look forward to for the Xbox ecosystem. And the fact is dropping on day one on Game Pass means that if you never played Hellblade 1, go and play that game. You'll experience the kind of first step in the story. But they also said that they wanted to make Senyu kind of feel like she's not a superhero, but they made her feel like she's like one of us. Like she's barely surviving to fight through each of these battles. And I feel like that intensity, that tension is really what makes Hellblade really good. Especially the first game made it feel really good because you were clearly not the strongest character in this universe. You, you basically had to survive the day in order to win and they kind of, i'm glad to hear they're bringing that back but their technology that they were showing off during this entire really this small showcase was impressive and lastly avowed actually looks pretty interesting i'm not going to say that i am off the boat of me being worried about this game mainly because the game originally was supposed to be kind of that skyrim feel very dark mystical kind of land but then it kind of came in with some cartoonish kind of like jokingly kind of use of these like art stylings but this trailer this this showcase actually did a pretty good job i actually was not as nervous walking away from this because the way they talked about the gameplay and the ways in which the, the maps look and the art style itself definitely looks a lot better compared to what i saw in the trailer the last time we saw avowed which was last year and i really like the fact that they added in that that multiple choices where they give you kind of a different pathway to kind of take the game. Very similar to what we saw with Fallout New Vegas or with Outer Worlds. So it kind of gives you a way that you can play it in your own way. And having these choices gives you kind of a consequence that happens. And I think they really emphasize that idea. So I'm hoping that they actually do stick with that because my only fear is that when you say that sometimes it, it doesn't really land as well as what you hope. So let's hope that it does actually stick. Now with the good, we do need to talk about the bad. And obviously this is not like a horrible showcase, but there are some things I was kind of annoyed by. The fact that almost every game that was showed off here did not have a release date that was definitive other than Hellblade 2 is kind of concerning. I mean, everything you think about it is outside of the summer. 
And I feel like the problem with these types of showcases is that your expectation is that you want to see things releasing before the second half of the year in this way too early showcase. But instead, we're getting a lot of games that are just showing in the second half of the year or by the fall, which I feel like, yeah, yeah, you know what? Microsoft, the fall is going to be stacked with games. And that's the holiday season. I get it. But at the same time, you want to try to have something scheduled for the first half and second half. So you are creating a kind of balanced ecosystem throughout the entirety of the year, rather than just hoping for something in the summer and the fall. And then that's it. I feel like that was kind of the, the issue I saw with Sony last year is that they kind of were banking on their big hitters in the fall. And that was it. And you don't want to fall into the same issue. Like I, I'm going to, ra I ragged on Sony. I'm going to rag on Microsoft. That's the same thing again. And I feel like if Hellblade is coming out in the summer, I also want to see more from Hellblade as in the gameplay as, and as well as the story. Cause I feel like this game's coming out in the summer. You want more things to look into and maybe they're going to have an entire thing solely based for Hellblade. Like just how Sony did one for God of War and they waited until almost like a month and a half before the game released to kind of give us anything. I understand that perspective, but at the same time, it's like, you, you know, you really want to get people excited. You want to bring in that, those numbers, people to pre-order sales. And they kind of dropped another thing today about the fact that it's actually going to release all digital. Now I understand that there are a, a cold coalition of gamers that are really upset about this and I, I, I to extend am understandable that yes you want to have something that's collectible something that you can have in your hands that you say you own but at the same time this is actually going to be a full digital release and the sale of the game is going to be hitting around $50 so this is not going to be a $70 release that we've seen in other games recently like Starfield this is only going to be a digital release but the price is actually going to go down hitting roughly around that seven to eight hours of gameplay which is very similar to the last game. So I, I honestly think it's a kind of a mixed bag. I feel like there's a lot of things you can say that are great about that idea that now you're selling game for cheaper. But at the same time, you can also say, well, you know, you want to see more from the sequel. You don't want it to be kind of the standard. And you know what it is? This is not an open world game. This is not, you know, Spider-Man size. This is not a map that you can scale and traverse. This is a linear story. So I feel like, yes, there are criticism about that. But at the same time, this is what old game development is when you do linear stories. So uh, it's kind of a mixed bag. I think that Aura being showed at this showcase and only being a PC exclusive for the time being is kind of ridiculous. The whole point of this Xbox Developer Direct is to show off games going to the console, right? That's the idea. Yes, we all know that Xbox is part of the ecosystem for Windows, but at the same time, it's like, I want to see games going to the console. And that's why it's called the Xbox Developer Showcase, not a PC Developer Showcase, because that's a whole different thing. I feel like they could have also showcased a lot more things happening in the first half of this year that actually are releasing versus kind of prioritizing these games happening in the second half. For example, Halo Infinite's dropping with their season six at the end of this month. And I know that Halo was gonna have their own showcase, but you could have easily had some sort of a trailer that was gonna get some people hyped and have three for three show up and show that trailer, show the work that they've been doing to Halo at this point so that people can start to get excited again about the game's release rather than putting it on its own showcase not as much people watching it it's i feel like these are moments where you want to get people back into your games and it's not just halo think about starfield starfield is getting their first major update re like very soon and it has a lot of fixes it has mod support why not show a glimpse of these things why not give these major game titles a little bit more love because you know what you own them right you're releasing them these are things happening very soon you want to show people that you are investing in your big titles not just on release, but even post-release content that a lot of people aren't really doing anymore. So imagine you were to show a season six trailer and kind of get people hyped for to then tune in to the kind of longer community kind of showcase that Halo has for the next day. Imagine you had that, people would be all hyped to see that. Or even Starfield, show off kind of some new things that you're adding to Starfield, get people back in the and talking about that game again. I feel like the more you do, the better off you're going to be. But overall, I feel like this was a solid showcase. I'm not going to think this is groundbreaking or game changing, but at the end of the day, this is actually a good showing of some solid games that to kind of arrive in the next year. We need to see more information about some of them to really get really excited about it. But overall, I felt like this was a pretty solid experience. Nothing really too awful, nothing too bad. I never, I wasn't really upset at the showcase. But yeah, there are some things that you could definitely improve on. But other than that, I feel like it was pretty solid. Well, what do you guys think about the Xbox Developer Showcase? Are you excited to see about some of the games dropping? Are you kind of upset that they didn't show certain things? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Till next time, it's Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys. Yeah.